Hey guys, and welcome back to Daddy Duck 365's Conservation Corner. You know, we're just over a year into the largest civilian firearms and ammo sales in the country. In the year 2020, more than 8 million people bought a firearm for their very first time. And ammo across the board from 20 Two long rifle to 300 Win Mag is now in short supply or even on back order or not just not even in the store itself. Now I had the opportunity to talk with Jim Strong at Strong Arm Firearms here in my hometown of Sumter, South Carolina and asked Jim what he thought and why this new surge in firearm sales and shortage of ammo. How you doing Jim? Doing good, buddy. Good. How you doing? Yes, sir. Listen, I see you got a new store. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the store? Uh, yeah. The new the new store here? Right, right. Uh, we moved from uh, out there by the base, uh, right where 441 378 cross. We just recently moved um, right at the first of the year out here to 2100 Thomas Upper Highway. Uh, we found this building for sale, and a uh, uh, fellow gave us a pretty good price on it, so we jumped. We'll be able to own this, so that'll help us down the road a lot, keep prices down. That's the name of the game. Yeah, right that's the name of the game, yeah. yeah. Put a lot of hours and manpower in it, but we got it like we want it. And don't have to hold up people at the door, and uh, we got plenty of room, plenty of space. So. Well, good. Good that's deal. Um, now, Jim, last year, 2020, has been a very unusual year yes, uh, with a lot of different things that are going on. And there's a lot of people. Um, well, let's just face facts, we're in a gun store, so they're buying guns and ammo. Did you see an uptick in your sales for the, of 2020? Yeah, I mean, basically, um, we think it was probably the, the COVID started it a little bit, but then the riots you know, kicked it in right. overdrive. Um, you just had a lot of first-time buyers, uh, a lot of people getting a little panicky, and so it definitely uh, it, it became a full-on rush by summer, which is our slowest months. Right. It really had to stop. It was an election year, so everybody gets a little antsy, and you know, whichever candidate, it, it's a, whoever's going to get it, it's going to go one way or the other. And I guess as far as the conservative gun owners, it didn't go our way, so now we're having to deal with that. So. Right. Now, now that we're into 2021, and I got to get used to yeah. saying that, say that. That'll, that'll mess you up. Yes, sir. And we're in the mid to late February right now. Have you? Have you seen an uptick in your sales of guns and ammo since the new administration has taken over? Yes, sir. Yeah, the, it's definitely, if you could keep up with the ammo, you could, you could be pretty, you'd be running right. as good as you were last year. But uh, ammo's uh, causing us, a, kind of tripping us up, so we're not being able to keep up. Um, so that does hurt sales a little bit. But since, um, I guess since handguns have started shipping, that's, that's helped a lot, because everybody's getting new concealed weapon stuff still. Correct. Things, so, um, ARs, AKs, you know, anything that they list as an assault weapon is going to be obviously looked for, and so if you can keep it in stock, never mind. Oh. Now, I know you're asking yourself, Matt, what does gun sales and ammo sales have to do with conservation? Hang them on a minute. When this surge in sales will end is kind of uncertain at this point, but one thing is for sure. The sale of firearms, ammunition, is going to lead to a huge boom in conservation and wildlife. Back in 1937, a Kentucky Senator, Pittman, and a Virginia Congressman, Robinson, made a bill now known as the Pittman-Robinson Act. Now, 11% of all gun sales uh, ammo sales, archery equipment, and some select sporting goods equipment, 11% of that goes back to the state, to your state's DNR, Department of National Resources. And this money, these funds, are to be used only and strictly for conservation programs. Things like public shooting ranges, wood duck boxes, things like take a kid hunting, or even wildlife research, hiring new biologists, and even hiring new game wardens. 
There is even a 10% excise tax on all handguns, which does goes to the same thing, to conservation projects. So, basically put, more guns, more ammo sales equals more conservation projects. And I do believe that this is one of the greatest untold stories for the year 2020. You know, we've had a lot, a lot going on between COVID-19, riots, po the political climate itself. But old gun buyers and new gun buyers does nothing but help in the conservation of our, one of our most precious resources, and that's the wildlife in our own states. As hunters, we all know about the Pittman-Robinson Act, and we have no problem with this excise tax. The new gun owners, these new gun buyers, their first time ever owning a gun, have probably have never heard of the Pittman-Robinson Act. Will they become hunters? Will they continue into the shooting sports? Or do they just buy a firearm for home defense and self-defense? It's too early to tell and possibly we'll never know. But one thing, and I keep saying it over and over, more gun sales, more ammo sales, means more wildlife and conservation programs and funding. I hope you've liked this short video. If you do, hit that thumbs up, give me a comment down below. If this is the first time you've seen my channel, think about subscribing. Hit that notification bell, and we will see y'all next time on Daddy Duck 365.